everybody. Welcome to ICC's Game of the Week with your host, as always, Joel Benjamin. Move over, Badur Jobava. Move over, Richard Rapport. We have a new 2700 player, and he may be more unconventional than those guys. Igor Kovalenko, a 26-year-old Ukrainian native now residing in and representing Latvia, won his fourth big open tournament in a row, the Night of Memorial in Warsaw. In a post-tournament interview, Kovalenko said he didn't prepare for any of the games, and I believe him. After all, he won two games with e4, c5, bishop e2. He said that his key strategy is he tries to feel his opponent, and if he is successful, his opponent will come under his control. In most cases, this meant slow positional squeezes, but in round two, Kovalenko must have felt that the best way to deal with a 21-year-old Indian IM, Srinath Narayanan, was to provoke him into launching a vicious assault. It looked like Kovalenko was going down for the count, but at the key moment, Narayanan's mind seemed to come under foreign control. Okay, so Narayanan playing white, and the opening starts off normally enough. It's a Queen's Indian. And this Queen B3, which we have seen before on Game of the Week. Knight C6, okay, a little threat of Knight A5. So white goes to defend the pawn. Now H5. Uh, this idea was original the first time around, which was the game Damaso Navara from Jerusalem 2015. And I... Uh, uh, displayed that game for Game of the Week. It was a, a very crazy game uh, that uh, eventually went into a long end game, which Navarro was narrowly able to win. Now, there haven't been any other games with this move so far. So it was just Navarra and now Kovalenko repeating this original idea. Um, but it still remains to be seen how sound it is. It does look kind of strange to attack on the wing like this, and it's one of those things that maybe is good for a one-off, but maybe not a repeat performance. All right, so Narayanan played e4, and now in this position, uh, Damaso played queen a4, chasing the bishop, and then d5, chasing the knight on c6, uh, different strategy, uh, is going to chase the other knight. And here c comes the peace sacrifice. H takes g3, and white is not in position to take back with the h pawn. And so he sacked a piece. Queen went back. G takes f2. King e2, knight h5, and so on. And that game you can find in the archives. Um, very sharp game. And as I said, very narrow victory in the end game by Navarra. Now, this game goes in a very different way. e5, knight g4, bishop h3. Uh, now the knight retreats to h6, which probably gives white a little bit too much room to work with. Uh, f5 seems to be a better option. Um, and then white can take this pawn on h4, and getting ready to play rook g1. So a move like bishop b7, rook g1 is awkward. It's white threatens to take the knight. So then black can play instead. Rook takes h4, but white then simply moves away, attacking the rook, which would be a lot better than taking it. Taking the exchange, not a good idea, because you can neutralize here, but black will trade queens and then take on d4 and we'll have more than enough compensation for the exchange. Instead of taking the rook, just simply bishop moving back, and now a couple black pieces are, are thrown, thrown back in confusion, and now computer suggests a cool castle.